Today on What's My Frame, I'm chatting with casting director Katie Griffin. Katie brings over 20 years of experience to the table, casting television, film, commercial sprint, and music videos. Katie has affectionately been described as a unicorn finder, and if the glitter mane fits, I say wear it proudly. <laughs> she opened Katie Griffin Casting in 2011 in New York and has pioneered on-site digital casting, a newfound industry standard of 2020. Katie's experience both as a performer and as a casting director gives her a unique perspective on how to better serve the needs of the industry while saving valuable time and money for her clients. After graduating from the University of Miami School of Music's rigorous musical theater conservatory, she relocated to New York City, where she helped jumpstart an entire genre of television, casting AMC's first reality series into character, followed by Cash Cab, What Not to Wear, and Whose Wedding Is It Anyway? From an actor's perspective, I can speak firsthand what an advocate Katie is. She raises industry standards by demanding fair treatment and equal pay for talent, and the utmost in professionalism from everyone involved. A staunch believer that empowered women empower women, Katie takes her time to mentor at-risk young women through the United Way's Girls Today, Leaders Tomorrow program and works closely with high school girls considering careers in the performing arts. Please join me in welcoming the unicorn finder, Katie Griffin, to the show. Hey Katie, thank you so much for joining us on What's My Brain. Hi Laura, thanks so much for having me. Can you start us off with your journey into casting, please? Yes. Um, so my name is Katie Griffin. I am a casting director. Um, I started out as a child performer and a child actor. Um, I went to college uh, for musical theater and I did have dreams of being on Broadway. And I assisted a casting director in Miami in hopes I could uh, get my foot in the door. And um, I was finding that in my mind, everyone who I was casting was getting booked for the job. So I thought maybe I have a knack for this. And um, I just kind of fell in love with uh, being behind the camera versus being in front of. And then I moved to New York to follow a, a career in casting. Can you tell us one of your personality strengths that's an asset in your casting and owning your own successful office? Why, yes I can. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm also of the mindset that empowered women empower women. And so I very much uh, like to empower the women who are around me, uh, yeah. who come after me and just, I want to lift them up. Absolutely. But um, in terms of a personality strength, I would say empathy um, because I've walked in the shoes of an actor before. Also, I'm an empath, so I'm acutely aware of the emotions of other people around me, and I'm pretty sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I had said, I've been in your shoes before, so I know what it's like to stand on your mark, and I know what it's like to get the sweaty palms and the cotton mouth and forget your name and all that stuff. It's pretty terrifying. Um, I always want count, uh, talent to know that when they come in, uh, for a casting with me to just be comfortable um, and that I want them to succeed. Uh, mm. I, I, I wouldn't bring them in otherwise. And so I really impress upon talent to trust me because I trust them to be there and I want them to trust themselves to really uh, bring their very best when they come in for an audition for, for me. I appreciate you sharing that because I think that is one of the, the biggest things that I feel like we've debunked on the podcast is you guys are on our side. We're auditioning so many times that we don't know about. Um, you guys have these lists and we are on your mind and you are constantly trying to find us work. Now I have a feeling as actors, we're going to be seeing more and more self tapes and unfortunately not as much in the room working with casting directors. What are some key elements in your eyes for a strong and memorable self tape? Yeah, so I've been, uh, a proponent of self tapes for the last few years because I'm a digital casting director. I have clients around the country and around mm -hmm. the world. So I've been really, uh, you know, championing for talent to, um, you know, start their home studios, create a home studio where you can self tape and, um, you know, what might be a really good uh, piece of equipment to have uh, in a home studio is some nice lighting, some yeah. up lighting. Um, whether you want to use your camera phone or a DSLR, that's great. Either of those will work. That's what we're 
uh, mostly looking for great lighting, a great setup, a nice clean backdrop, and most importantly, a slate that is super friendly and very honest and genuine to you before you dive right into the acting. That's what's going to set you apart from another actor. And, um, you know, above all else, please follow the directions that are presented to you um, and really try to deliver the self tape closer to the date that you have seen the breakdown versus closer to the deadline date. Because I'm not sure if you guys know this, but we are, we are seeing them in real time. We are downloading them. We are viewing them in real time. Then we are figuring out who our selects are, who will then be shared with the client. Mm -hmm. Our clients will want to see these in real time. We're not going to wait until the day after the deadline to submit our casting packages to our clients. We're going to submit them in real time so then they can watch us update them. Yeah. So there might be someone who looks exactly like you who delivered her herself tape a day or two after she saw the uh, breakdown and then she's already in the mind. She's already top of mind in our minds and in the client's minds. Uh -huh. And you may wait until the very end to deliver at which point it may actually be too late. Yeah. And the other, the other thing I would say is in regards to self tapes, please do not wait until like 10 minutes before the deadline because it's like Murphy's law. If it could go wrong, it will go wrong. I see it happen all the time where I'll get an email, you know, an hour or two hours after the uh, deadline. Yeah. And someone will say, Oh, my computer crashed or it took forever to upload. So please, please, please do not wait until the very end because right now we are being bombarded and flooded with so many self tapes mm. because of the fact that the uh, the quarantine and our industry being uh you know paused so mm. you know the competition is pretty stiff right now so really just try to tighten up your uh, your self tape package mm -hmm. and um then and the great thing too about self tapes is that you can record your self tape as many times as you'd like I will never know. Exactly. When you come in for an in-person session with me, you only have one shot oh. to wow me, wow my client, and you may have had an off day, there might have been an issue with parking or whatever where you're in your head, and with a self-tape, you could record it multiple times and send just the very best to us. Yeah. So. I really appreciate you sharing that, especially about the slate, because I think for me personally, um, being a, a bi-coastal actress, sometimes, you know, there is that like list you feel like you gotta get through. It's like your name, da 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 And it is hard to find that balance of still being yourself because like you wouldn't walk in and meet someone and like give this like stats list and trying to find that balance of personality without being like kitsch is, is tricky. So I appreciate you like pointing that out and it's just like a little reminder for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, we casting wants you to win. We really, truly want you to win. So, um, you know, if you need to say a mantra to yourself, or if you need to put a sight line above uh, the camera lens or somewhere on the wall, go ahead and do that. We will never know what's on the other side of that camera. Whatever will help you stay comfortable and stay in character and like knock it out of the park, yeah. go ahead and do that. So exactly. Um, now I know that you cast for projects, just like you were saying, across the country, but your home base is in New York. What drew you after graduation to New York versus LA? Thanks for asking that because I actually almost moved to LA. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. And, uh, however, family matters kept me closer to home. Okay. So, um, you know, I think it was the best decision I ever made to, uh, to move to New York. Um, you know, I originally come from Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is like a gritty city with with lots of heart. And if you get to know me, that's who I am to the core. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that having lived in New York for so many years and having worked in New York so many years, it actually shaped who I was. So I had a really nice East Coast base, but then it really shaped who I was. So I have that New York tenacious work ethic. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but I will say, I do hope to retire 
in Southern California one day. Come over to the palm trees <laughs> and the oceans. Yes, we have tons of green juice. I cannot wait. <laughs> Now I want to talk about casting profiles for just a bit and what materials stand out to you on breakdown services or casting networks um, and also like what can actors be doing in this downtime to be refreshing our materials to make casting's job easier so that you all truly know like what we look like, what we're able to do, like streamline it. Yeah, so I would say in terms of uh, the materials, Make sure that uh, for any breakdown site that you have a subscription to, make sure all of, across the board, all of those subscription services have your, uh, the current agent that you're with, your stats updated, your resume updated or uploaded, uh, or your credits up to date. Um, Headshot should be high res and the most current headshots, not headshots from years ago. We don't need to see those. We need to see the most current headshots that you have. Um, and the types of headshots that we're looking for are, you know, headshots that don't look forced into a type um, and shots that show an actor uh, that they're relaxed and confident with, an, with an, a genuine, authentic smile. Let's say if it's for a commercial shot, they should look like themselves, not look posed or look uncomfortable. Um, yeah. And of course, like the resume should be totally professional. So so hopefully that will help. But right now, all we have is time. So use this time wisely and upload everything that you can to each of those sites that you uh, have subscriptions with. Uh, make sure that if you were thinking about working on a website or you already have a website, really use the time wisely now to fine tune yeah. um, you know, the material on there. Make sure it's the most up-to-date bio. Maybe you wanna tweak your bio. Maybe you want to start a newsletter. Maybe you want to work on, on your uh, demo reels for VO and you'd like to upload them. Really just use this time wisely right now. I think yeah. that the best thing that we can hope from coming out of this is to be like smarter and like just ready to hit the ground running when it's safely safe to do yeah. so because I mean I personally I went back and went through all of my special skills and LA casting I'm like can I really do this at expert level or is it more of a, a this have I done this recently well I've actually I've started doing this like and actually just that's something when we're going to five six seven auditions in a week we're not taking the time to do that like now's the time to do that and I can also share with you that having sat in auditions where on a a uh, on an actor's resume in the special skills section, mm -hmm. a client may say, "Oh, it says that you are um, proficient in hip hop, or you're an expert hip hop dancer. Could yeah. you pop and lock for us?" And if the actor looks at you like, "Oh no, I thought you meant..." oh, I just put that on there because I have fun at the club or whatever. It's like, that's not a particular special skill. A special skill is something that's going to set you apart from another actor. Mm -hmm. And something else that I will say about uh, the special skills section, yeah. I think a lot of actors just kind of like throw that away. They're like, oh, that's not even important. Well, it actually is important. Yeah. Um, I have also been in auditions where an actor has come in, they're on their mark, they're giving an amazing read, and in their special skills section, mm -hmm. yes, they have the information there that they can speak with an Irish brogue, but because it was placed between pogo stick and yoga, and there was no organization to the special skill, my client spent the time staring at the resume versus looking at the actor and then just interrupted her and said, can you really perform this with an, with an Irish brogue? Like, can you do that? Can you do that? And it kind of threw her a bit because she was already in character and then had to try to switch with the, the brogue. It didn't end up working. She didn't get the job and it was, it was tough. Um, so I just say talent, Let's imagine that if you are going to be, uh, you know, aside from uploading um, your content to these subscription sites, let's also focus on turning your resume into a PDF. Have a few resumes. If you are um, in the New York market, 
or you're a stage actor and um, you come into a commercial casting, make sure you bring the resume that has uh, on camera work first and then theatrical or stage work underneath. So a client, they may have years of experience in uh, directing or producing. They may say, she was a bit theatrical. And it's like, no, she wasn't. You just happened to have seen all of her theater work listed first. Yeah. And so I just like, I'm like, here's the deal. Uh, let's just play the little tricky trick game where you put, you just have two resumes. You have yeah. one for theater where you have all of your theater credits listed first, and then all of your film and television credits listed underneath. And it's like, oh, she's a theater actress who also has a co-starring role in a couple of uh, series. Amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. If you come in for, uh, you know, a commercial or an episodic or anything where you are on camera, have your on camera resume that has all of your film, television, you know, new media, all of that stuff listed at the top, then your theater credits listed below, then you can list your training and then all those special skills. And then um, in regards to the special skills, if this is not universal, and I really wish it was, yeah. I would love it. I'm just putting this out there. I would love it Start a new if, <laughs> if you could put all of your acting related special skills first. Like, why are you, why are we here? Oh, yeah. let's put your dialects, any accents you can do, any teleprompter experience, any improvisational experience, anything that is acting related, let's put that first. So yeah. you don't have to break it down into uh, categories. It can just be word, comma, word, comma, word, comma, like it's just a paragraph as they go. Then move on to your um, performance related disciplines, such as are you a singer? All right. Well, if you're a soprano, can you sing a low this to a high that? Put that in there. Do you play any other instruments? Put yeah. that next. Then move on to dance. Tell us all the cool things that you are very proficient in. Mm -hmm. Not something that you took a ballet class in third grade and then you never took another one again because I have seen uh, clients ask talent to do things, listen okay. on their special skills and... Um, Oh, it's, it, oh, it's so, it's hard. So, oh yeah. So I want to help you help yourself to get booked, but also I want, I, yeah, I just, let's, let's all be in this together. And then after the, um, after the, uh, performance related special skills, then you could move on to any languages you speak that would set you apart or, um, any any sports related or physical activities maybe you're a yoga instructor or a spin instructor you want may want to put that there yeah. then then you can list passport license motorcycle license scuba certified anything like that then list that at the end uh, my goal is is to have my clients eyes on you when you walk into a casting session not in your resume mm -hmm. so that it should just be a brief scan and then back to you not oh what did, can she do that oh what, okay I don't want them reading pogo yeah. stick Irish brogue yoga like there there is no rhyme or reason to that like wow. so and I think we've all been in those commercial auditions where you know, in callbacks per se, you know, they're looking over like the printouts and they're looking over notes and it's, you know, it feels like there's a lot going on. So anything that we can do to simplify the process and get eyes up, we want to be doing. I think a lot of people don't um, take into consideration that um, a client may actually have some B-roll in mind based on the fact that you can play piano. You may be coming in for the role of, let's say, a young mom, but maybe there's B-roll in mind for piano playing or yoga posing or, you know, driving a, a stick shift car. Like, it, yeah. it could be so many different things that you're thinking, well, why would they even need to know that? But it's actually important. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that you can actually do should really be listed because I have definitely had that happen where I've gone in an audition for one role and then got something else because the special skill was actually like was better fit over here, but didn't get pulled in for the initial audition. So I completely Love agree. It. Special skills, awesome. I'm like all about it. Um, what makes you excited about bringing in a new actor? Perhaps you saw them in a play, guesting on another show, social media. I feel like casting's mind works in this beautiful way where it's like constantly Rolodexing. <laughs> 
actually. So, um, so I actually have, um, you, you call it Rolodexing. I have 20 years worth of contacts in my, uh, my files. And uh, we'll talk about that later. But um, I will tell you that, that I am constantly doing that when mm -hmm. I'm watching a commercial, when I'm watching television. I'm on my phone, I am DBing someone or I'm Googling their name. Or if I don't even know what their name is, I'm typing in woman in Tide commercial with a pink shirt and Reddit gets me there yeah. or whoever gets me there. But, um, but I will say like, whether it be a rookie actor or a veteran actor, I give everyone the same level of attention uh, when they come into my castings. Yeah, it's awesome to see talent who I know, you know, if I've seen them on my favorite show or a commercial and they're willing to come in for me because mm -hmm that actually reminds me of how far my business has come. So yeah. that, that really gets me excited, but across the board, we're all friends. It's, you know, I, I just love a casting session. A casting session really just excites me. It energizes me. And it's like seeing old friends, even if we've never met before, but we all have that same common bond. Mm -hmm. Completely. Yeah. Um, now going off of that, what is a common and easily avoidable mistake that you see actors make in the room? Yes, apologies. I can't stress enough that you should never start off any interview, uh, which is an audition, uh, with an apology. Um, act like we're working together and act like you've already booked the job and we're just simply rehearsing. Um, mm -hmm. By apologizing, you're starting from a place of weakness rather than a place of confidence and strength. So no need don't even need to apologize. Don't tell us I'm sorry, but, or this is my first time, but nope, don't tell us that. We don't want or need to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I'd like to talk about social media for a second and what role you feel that that plays in actors, especially in the commercial space, um, getting extra, you know, images or content to package an actor and show it to the client. Sure. Um, well, I'm glad that you asked because branding has become such a controversial topic yes. amongst actors recently. I can tell you firsthand that with each of the commercials that I've cast, my clients, the very first question that they ask immediately after seeing a headshot and resume is, what are their social handles? They want to know if you are in line with their brand. And then they also want to know if you come with a built-in fan base. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in some cases, your social accounts, if they're not scrubbed, could have some content that doesn't align with the client's S and P standards and practices. Mm -hmm. So for, for example, um, I cast a children's uh, network show last year and I had submitted 100 actresses for the role and 100 actresses were removed from the running because um, they didn't pass the social media screening. So if, let's say if you have dreams of hosting a children's network show, then maybe start out right now thinking, my followers are in preschool. Mm -hmm. What kind of content should I be put, putting out there as the host of a children's, a popular children's network show? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe my, my content should be geared more that's like, oh, wholesome, let's say, or mm -hmm. something that's geared more for uh, a child. Additionally, I would just say, like, think before you post. Let's do that five-year plan. Where will I be in five years? So mm -hmm. in five years, yeah, you're, you've got this lead role on a show. Mm -hmm. Let's go back five years. Yeah. In that moment, do, do you stand by something that you, will you stand by something that you posted five years ago? Will you stand by that? Or did you write it in the heat of the moment? Or are you like, I don't even feel that way anymore. So go through and maybe do your own internal scrubs or whatever. Or quite frankly, if you're, let's say you're very vocal about something in particular that maybe doesn't, um, yeah, let's just say you're very vocal about something. Or, or how about this? Look at yourself as an actual business. You as the actor may have your own Instagram account 
And then you as the non-actor or in off hours have a totally separate account that's private and it's just for you. Maybe you want to post photos of your dog or maybe you want to post photos, you know, romantic photos with your, your other half. Um, maybe that's not content you want to put out there or it may actually be because then it shows the real you. Yeah. It's totally up to you, but I wouldn't want talent to disregard the fact that social media is a key factor in uh, casting right now. Yeah. I so appreciate that because I think, especially in the current climate, I yeah. think everyone needs to be more aware of what they're putting out there and how it lasts. Even if you like scrub it eventually, it's, it's out there. And to think before, before typing my acting teacher he says that before he ever responds to anyone that he always he has his wife read it and then be like should I should I post this or should I like give it a minute and sometimes she'll be like I would wait two hours and then I would read it again <laughs> you know and you need to have that accountability partner and also find that in yourself yeah um actors are often so busy thinking about their audition they don't stop to think about the stresses and deadlines that casting is facing what are some important things to keep in mind for actors when we're coming into the room, you know, perhaps we're like, we're trying to shuffle an audition or whatever. And can you just give us a little bit of the behind the scenes of what you guys are dealing with on a daily basis? I actually learned this motto from a former client. Arriving early means that you are on time. Arriving on time means that you are late. And arriving any time after that is a lost job. In many cases, we have packed uh, casting schedules. And so we please ask that you would respect timing. Arriving on the time, like at the exact time when you are supposed to be standing on your mark means that you are already late because you needed to have checked in, you signed in, checked in, yeah. look to make sure um, has the script changes, changed, have the sides changed? Are there new sides? Are there no sides now? Like what's going on? You don't want to roll in and think, oh, I'm going to stand on, they're going to take me immediately and I'm going to stand on my mark right away. If anything, what that does is that causes extra stress because then you've created backup That's and so maybe it takes away from a restroom break or a lunch break. And then it puts, um, or the time that you have reserved at the studio. So talent, if you can just be mindful of that. Um, I don't often see that that much anymore, but I certainly see it. Um, but I will say that I'm a casting director who takes so much time with talent. I value the fact that maybe you're running between uh, gigs, running between auditions. Maybe you've left work early. Maybe you came to a casting for me and you were looking for parking and it just took forever to find that. I value your time. So, um, but I would just say, just kind of keep in mind, all right, so if I'm supposed to be on my mark at 1030, huh? let me just get there at 10, just in case, just in case. Yes. You never know. Additionally, they may be able to take you in earlier and then you can get out of there to your next, your next audition. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, early in your career, you worked on Cash Cab. I still love that. That has been a quarantine thing. Um, what not to wear and whose wedding is it anyway? Can you take us behind the scenes a bit on the creative process of those kind of shows? Yep. It looks like an absolute blast to be a part of. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, well, I'm, I'm actually really still like 10, 15 years later, I'm still really proud of the work that I did casting those shows. Yeah. Those shows were cast in the early 2000s when it was pretty tough booking talent on reality shows. Um, Cash Cab, it helped me cut my teeth in guerrilla street casting. Mm -hmm. um, the team would be all over the city scouring like smart people who were like real characters. Um, and this was pretty much done like before the days of social media. So I would go to Mensa meetings, quiz nights, Scrabble game nights, any place, the library, any place where I thought I could find people who would pass this test, which was under the ruse of a fake show, because we still had to maintain the element of surprise. So the guests thought that they were taking a test, which was very strange because it had nothing to do with the cooking show that we were selling to them. But they're like, oh, these are interesting questions. Mm -hmm. Robespierre, what do I need to know about Robespierre with cooking? But 
we just were able to sell it. And so that really helped me step out of my skin. Mm -hmm. Um, it helped me be able to just walk up to strangers and strike up a conversation and also be able to, uh, figure out pretty quickly, let's end a conversation. Thank you so much and move along. So I learned a lot, uh, about guerrilla street casting while working on Cash Cab. And what's so great about living in the city and then working on a show that is based in an actual cab where at the time we didn't have Ubers or Lyfts. Lyfts. So people, drunk people might be yelling, oh, Cash Cab. And I'm like, honey, that's actually, that car was put away earlier this afternoon in the uh in the parking garage that's not out picking people up but it would be so fun to see them um and i still see it today so yeah. i just love it i love cash cab i'm so glad it's back um i've talked to uh some crew members some are return crew members and some are new and it's like it's still it's still fresh it's something about it still the element of surprise i'm like how are you doing it all these years later. So it's still a success. And mm -hmm. um, I really like how Bravo has put a spin on it where they're adding, um, you know, some, some, some Bravo celebrities. Or Everybody is like just excitement when they realize when the lights come on. Oh, it's, totally. You can tell like, that's real. Yep. <laughs> and we might be across the street hiding because we needed to make sure that the person that we really, you know, entrusted to because it was a pass-off system. I can't give too much away, but it is a pass-off system. And so um, we would need to make sure, did, did, did he or she get into the cab? Um, and some might not, because they're like, I'm not getting in this cab. Where were you taking me? I was told something else. So, but for the people who did get in, the surprise, and then you'd hear from them later, thank you so much, I won. And it just, it would bring such joy to my life. And yeah. it's, uh, it, it's awesome. So Cash Cab's amazing. And, and so was not, What Not to Wear as well. The element of surprise uh, really needed to be uh, kept for What Not to Wear. And again, it was this ruse. And it's like, like a, I had a former boss tell me um, when I worked on Whose Wedding Is It Anyway, Katie, go out and sell it. And I would just do it. So um, I will say Whose Wedding Is It Anyway is one of my favorite reality shows uh, that I had ever cast, basically because not only was I able to make uh, couples wedding dreams come true but I was also able to travel with the crew and that's where I cut my my teeth in field production on a on a reality show um, and you know I like my boss said Katie goes go out and sell it I was able to convince sisters to change their wedding dates to the same date at the same church and walk down the aisle at the same time um, I was also able to uh, sell brides and grooms on jumping out of airplanes and saying I do. So I did, it was a lot of fun. And um, I got to travel the world doing it. And I, I loved that time. I really would say that uh, that was one of my, one of my favorite shows to cast. Um, and also, I, I feel like I, I have helped plan so many weddings in my casting career. I really Wedding have. planner and the special skills section. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, now, one of the many ways that you have been supporting actors recently through the quarantine is through your 10-minute generals that you've been offering through your website. Can you tell us how that started and what the response has been? Why it was important yeah. for you to, to give back in that way? Absolutely. Um, well, it all started around March 15th. Like, I knew that production would be coming to a halt based on what I was watching in the news and what was going on around me with stay at home orders. Um, you can't shoot in a studio if you're in quarantine. So I also saw that production was prepping for the halt. So I just decided to use my time since I had no idea when quarantine would be ending to host these 10 minute generals with talent. And so I created this program uh, with the mission to give as many actors the ability to meet with me for 10 minutes that we may not have had otherwise. Um, I wouldn't be in this business if it wasn't for talent. So I feel uh, like a responsibility to give talent my time right now. Um, and I've talked to talent from any, on both coasts around the country. I've talked to talent in Dublin, Ireland, uh, where else? Um, 
uh, Puerto Vallarta, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, where else, Turks and Caicos, uh, Montreal. I'm speaking to international talent as well, and I'm hearing the same, the same thing, the same, we are one big community. Yeah. And um, it's been a real, it's been a real blessing for me um, because I approached it initially with, oh, well, I'll just give them the time because it's a, I've never had this time, this much time where I'm able to reply to emails, um, meet with talent and just get to know them. It's yeah. typically running between casting sessions. If somebody put, uh, puts me on a newsletter, I may read it one month and then piece out another. So this time around, it's like, I am replying to emails. Yes, I'm a few weeks behind, but I'm still doing it because I've received thousands of emails, but I'm still doing it. But with, but with this, uh, this 10 minute pr uh, program, we'll call it, it has been, uh, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. And so I, I meet with talent for 10 minutes. Is it a true general? No, what we do is, we do a little intro, they'll either um, perform a monologue for me or commercial copy. I give them some tweaks and, uh, you know, then we'll talk just a few minutes uh, more about what um, they're working on or um, how they're handling the quarantine um, and or the current state of the world. Um, or we will use the time to work on their headshot and resume and I'll just tweet the resumes and whatnot. Um, so it's a little, and sometimes it's actually a little bit longer than 10 minutes because I do have a gift of gab. Um, but also too, I feel like I was put on this earth to be a casting director. Like this year alone has reminded me, there is a reason why you found your way onto this side of the camera. There is a reason why you were meant to be here do the very best you can to give back to the actors because you would not be in business without them. So the very least that you can do is give time to them. And, you know, it's, they're fun. I will say that some of them are very cathartic. Some of them are emotional. It's, it's very interesting, but I will say that it has given me uh, so much joy over the past three months to be hosting these. Um, and then once our 10 minute, uh, the 10 minute session is over, I give shout outs to the actors on my Insta stories and they love it because it's yeah. building a sense of community. Yeah, I think that's one of the most beautiful things that's come out of quarantine is a lot of the walls came down and there was this connecting hands across different areas of the industry and this sense of, I think because it all, it shut down so suddenly, I think we were pushed together in a way. And, you know, directors, writers, casting, every actors, everyone's kind of, sharing information, sharing resources, sharing encouragement, and it's, uh, it's been really beautiful, right? I think we're, we weren't able to do when we were moving so, so, so fast. Exactly, and what it has done is it has level set us. We are all in the same boat right now, mm -hmm. so I'm just, I'm rolling with it. <laughs> yes. Now, I when think I, we all are. <laughs> we are. We are all doing the best we can. Yeah. Karen's need to be a little bit quieter. Now, you have been affectionately described as a unicorn finder. When I saw that, I was like, there must be a story behind this. I have to ask. So, um, how did you get that nickname? <laughs> well, funny you should ask. So, I was interviewed for a fashion magazine, and then after the writer and I chatted, she said, you know, Katie, I think you're a unicorn finder. You find the most unique people for every single project. And then it kind of stuck. So I don't use the title as a tagline or anything, but I don't know, maybe I should. Um, I, but going back, I have a database of talent and people who I've met who are characters over the last 20 years. And this database is so massive. So maybe I am the unicorn finder and maybe I am helping others to find a unicorn within themselves. That's it. I think you should make it a tagline because it's great. It is a great nickname, tagline, slum. Now you also work quite a bit in voiceover. Any advice for actors who are currently working on improving their demos or wanting to upgrade their home studio? I mean, as a voiceover actor, you know, we've heard, you know, put the towel or a blanket on your closet roof. Um, but is there anything that you would uh, advise actors to be working on? Yes, 
do it now, do it immediately. If you are even interested in getting into voiceover, I posted this on Instagram a few weeks ago. So here's a list of things that uh, anyone who might be interested in VO um, or someone who already is in the VO world but just wants to, to just enhance their home studio to make it slightly more professional. Um, here's a list. So, so you want to get yourself a condenser mic, um, mm. some good mics are Rode, Shure, Sennheiser. You're going to need a preamp. A good one is Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 possibly a reflection filter if you don't have um, you know that square uh, room or uh, a soundproofed room yeah. and if you live in a city uh, with a lot of noise the reflection filter is very helpful of course a pop screen you can get those on amazon um, and some programs for you to use for recording and editing, Pro Tools, Reaper, Adobe Audition, Client Interfacing, mm -hmm. Source Connect has been uh, huge with my clients uh, as of late. So is Audacity, um, if not ISDN. And, um, and then of course, training because you can have all the equipment in the world, but it's, it may not actually deliver uh -huh. a, uh, a successful read. Yeah. That's where the training comes into play. And additionally, you could ha have an amazing delivery and amazing VO talent, but if you don't have all of those, uh, the pieces of equipment, um, you may end up getting lost in the fray. Um, the VO market right now is flooded. Um, because essentially, you know, we came to a halt. All on-camera work came to a halt. VO work just continued to, uh, to take off. Yeah. I've had tons of clients reach out to me and say, hey, we're actually going to be repurposing some uh, B-roll and we're turning it into a commercial. So let's start finding these voices. So there's lots of VO work to be had right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I would most definitely focus on that. If it's something that you are already working on, just tighten it up. And if it's something that you are interested in, um, do a little bit more research on those things that I listed. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of, of demo reels, um, you should have a bunch ready um, and, and have those ready to go either on your website or a digital platform like SoundCloud that you can easily send links off. Um, and something, a reel that would be important to have would be commercial, an audiobook reel, an animation reel. But I've also heard of VO talent who have a series of clips with various dialects or various genres of animation. Um, um, the cool thing is with VO, like the world is your oyster. So just make sure that you have the quality of your demo reel is like totally professional. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That is a wealth of resources for VO. And I, I so appreciate that because we haven't covered nearly enough of that on the podcast. And you're exactly right. That's the only one that I've consistently been getting auditions for throughout quarantine is because I could in fact do that and in your home and they can continue to generate content and commercials and work. Okay. Uh, now I'm a big believer in the importance of education and taking the initiative to learn and work in other areas of the industry, you know, be it writing, editing, creating your own content. Um, what are some areas of the industry that you would encourage actors to research and in this time learn more about to then enhance their acting craft? Sure. I'm, I'm right now, all we have is time. So until that vaccine is ready and it's widely distributed, use the time to work on anything that you have always been interested in pursuing, whether that's a technical skill like editing or writing or learning a new language or instrument, like absorb as much info as you can right now if you are interested in doing that. Um, I'm always surprised by how many actors haven't ever practiced script analysis or know how to break down a script or break down a character yeah. or know the relationship between their character and their uh, scene partner. So I'd say first, master the craft of acting, then keep uh, practicing and honing those skills. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, your credits also include music videos, and you're actually the first cast character we've had on the show that's worked in mm. the video space. Um, 
for dancers specifically, but even actors that are going in, because a lot of a lot of music videos have actors as well to portray like the love story or what have you. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any advice for auditioning in that space and um, how to just improve that skill? Sure. So I've worked on music videos for Justin Timberlake, uh, Wyclef, Carlos Santana, Avicii, John Legend, The Mowgli's, Troy Ave all of which had dancers. So for my dance music videos, talent was requested to be ready to learn a small bit of choreography on site. And then we would give um, groups time to rehearse and then come back and then perform them. So I found that giving them too much time between sharing the choreography and then coming back in for the audition didn't allow talent to, uh, you know, be spontaneous. And in the moment, I felt that it was too rehearsed and not authentic. So we try to keep uh, the space between learning and the space between performing as uh, close as possible. Also, we want to see what you can do. Um, Yes, there is definitely choreography that goes into a music video. And And though, we are also looking for some cool moves that you can do. So we always ask uh, dancers to please bring their latest, coolest moves and, yeah, tricks, anything they can do. Improv element, yes. The improv element of dance. We ask (laughs) them to deliver. (laughs) Working on so many different projects in the industry, you're a shining example of the benefits of investing in strong and lasting relationships. For actors, we sometimes miss the mark on networking or um, view it as kind of like a, a, a slimy word. Um, but for actors that don't know where to start or simply want to improve their relationships with casting during this time, how can we as actors start establishing meaningful relationships beyond you know, going in search of opportunities like what you're doing with the 10-minute the chats? Sure. So I actually just gave this uh, very advice yesterday uh, for, to an actor who was curious, how do I ask for feedback? Mm-hmm. If you want feedback from casting, hang on to every ounce of the interaction that you had with the casting director in your audition. Then you can have your agent follow up with the casting director and mention something that stood out to you as a compliment. It'll show that you were listening and taking everything in, a casting director would love that. Mm. We don't often hear that we're appreciated. Oftentimes, uh, we're just the, uh, another cog in the machine. So maybe your agent wants to say, hey, Katie, I hope everything went great uh, with the audition yesterday. Uh, Laura mentioned that you had pointed out her ability to take direction with the first line. Uh, she really appreciates your feedback and your honesty. Do you have any other feedback that you'd be willing to share? We'd both appreciate it because we appreciate you. If somebody wrote that to me, I'd be like, oh my gosh, absolutely. So um, that's one way that you can mm-hmm. network and it also makes you memorable. Um, and and other, the other thing I would just uh, say in terms of trying to network with casting, uh, maybe in the casting, sincerely, not insincerely, oh. sincerely say, thank you so much for having, for giving me the opportunity to audition for this role. Or thank you so much for having me. It really, it really means a lot to me. We don't often hear that. Oftentimes we hear, bye, thank you, see you later. And it's like off to the next one. So if you can try to be as in the moment as possible um, while you're in a casting and be, you know, genuine, authentic, you know, you don't have to lay it on thick, but just, uh, you know, try to be kind, um, to the casting, we would really appreciate that. And we might be more apt to saying, actually, I will give feedback. Here's what I really liked about her and here's what she might wanna work on for next time. Um, and then that's, that's, that puts you in my mind because I'm like, that, that's a really nice woman. She was so nice to me. I'm gonna write her name down. She's really great. Yeah. She, always, she always gives me a, real, a, a genuine warm smile every time I see her. So that's one way you could do it. Um, that's great advice. Yeah, that's helpful. And that is, and I think it, it's really good for actors to be mindful of, we're coming into you guys' space. We're being invited in, and you want to act like a good guest at a dinner party so that you get invited to the next one or the next game night or what have you. Like, you want to. I love that. Oh, thank you. That's I have really great. Do you have any more of those? <laughs> no, I recently colored my hair, so no. <laughs> 
All right, now the last question we ask every guest on What's My Frame, what is one thing you wish you could go back and tell your younger self? Yes. This is what I would say to younger Katie. Mm -hmm. While you're out there advocating for talent, do not, do not forget to advocate for yourself. It took me such a long time to realize that like, no one is going to be my hero. Yeah. So nobody's going to be my hero. So I've got to be taking the, the same advice that I'm giving to talent. Be your own hero. Advocate for yourself. Yeah, you may have allies. And yes, uh, stay connected to those allies. But you, you should always be advocating for yourself. Absolutely. Katie, I cannot thank you enough for coming and sharing your wealth of knowledge, your humor, and your encouragement with us all. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it as well. And it was wonderful to be interviewed uh, by a female podcaster for the very first time. I'm very happy to have participated and I'm very proud of you because the, I've listened to your podcast and it's fantastic. So I'm wishing you all the best. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today on What's My Frame and to my guest, Katie Griffin. If you'd like to learn more about Katie, you can follow her on Instagram at Katie Griffin Casting. If you enjoy the show, please rate, review, and subscribe so you won't miss an episode and tell a friend. Our goal here at What's My Frame is to encourage, educate, and inspire a creative community, not just today, but for years to come. You can also follow us on Instagram at What's My Frame for daily blogs, industry news, and giveaways. I'm Laura Linda Bradley, and this is What's My Frame.